tiny town of Lyons was cut off completely by what local officials describe as a 500-year flood. Residents have been told they could be on their own for up to three days. Rain continued throughout the day and could get worse. For a second night, Colorado battles darkness, floodwaters, and a race against time to rescue its residents. Ana Cabrera, CNN, Boulder, Colorado. Well, I'm done organized. Ivory pushers are wiping Kenya's elephants, but national park rangers are taking them on. Just this week, the Kenyan Wildlife Services reported the shooting of three suspected poachers. CNN's Zane Virgie caught up with some of the authorities to find out what they face. Elephants in the cool, muddy water causing a splash. A sweet relief from the baking savanna heat. Nearby, a baby elephant is only too eager to imitate the adults. A fun afternoon for this herd of elephants in Kenya's Savo Conservation Area. Park rangers protecting the elephant's natural playground. <laughs> On this day, they're polishing their training, how to load and reload a firearm quickly, and then aim accurately at the enemy when under threat. The enemy poaches. The men in this newly formed team are drawn from various security agencies in the country, part of a government initiative to boost the fight against wildlife poaching. Alan Maina, a ranger with the Kenya Wildlife Service, says the highly militarized anti-poaching training reflects the new kind of poachers that they're up against, well-armed and highly organized. The poaching now, they are using uh, sophisticated methods because they come, they may use even the vehicle, in some Asian countries, like China and Thailand, ivory means status. People are willing to pay high prices for the rare, illegal commodity. Their appetite has fueled the slaughter of thousands of elephants. So far, this year alone, Kenya has lost more than 250 elephants. Last year, more than 360. I have no words for this. Robert O'Brien, a senior officer at Kenya Wildlife Service, shows us what he calls an elephant graveyard. Rows and rows of old elephant skulls and jaws, remains of elephants that have died from drought and at the hands of poachers. This is just part of, maybe a quarter of what is out there. These are hundreds of elephants, hundreds of elephants dead. A new wildlife conservation and management bill in Kenya will put in place stiffer penalties for poaching once it goes into effect. But in the meantime, Alan and his group of rangers continue to push forward. They understand only too well their critical role in protecting the largest mammal on earth. But the task is daunting. The men are few. The land is huge and porous. Tourism is a key part of Kenya's economy. The wildlife, a key attraction to visitors from across the world. But animal rights groups warn that if the current elephant killings continue, in a few decades there will be no elephants left in the wild. But Alan remains hopeful about victory. We are hoping that uh, even the years to come, like 15 years, the tourists which will be coming and seeing animals because the effort we are putting, we feel that we are going to win the war of, war of poachers. Crucial talks are underway in Geneva for a second day on the Russian plan for Syria to surrender control of its chemical weapons. UN's U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is meeting his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, and U.N. Syrian envoy Lagda Brahumi was also present at the meeting. CNN's chief security correspondent explains the progress made. So you got it, the essential disagreement there, which is on the threat of force. The U.S. saying it's going to reserve that right. The Russians saying that should be off the table. I just watched the delegates, Russian and American, go back in for another session of meetings. As you mentioned, Lavrov and Kerry have now said they will meet again to discuss this plan later this month in New York. So you can see how the timeline of these talks can extend. But they also say they're going to expand the subject of the talks and, and not just speak about getting rid of serious chemical weapons, but also to a peaceful end to the, to the civil war there, to the, to the civil conflict. Um, so we're seeing this about more than just the stockpiles. As you say, Secretary Kerry said that their start has been constructive. That's not quite as bad as frank discussions in diplomatic speak, not quite as good as productive, uh, but at least they're talking, and we'll see how things go today. And the behavior and dynamic that's been on display there at the talks, I understand that there was an incident 
Was Sergei Lavrov that was caught on camera? Well, it's been interesting to watch their rapport. Kerry and Lavrov have a long relationship. They generally have a good rapport, but even yesterday we saw one instance where Kerry sort of joked that uh, it's too early to take Lavrov's word, and then today, as they were meeting with Lakhdar Brahimi, listen to this moment and this exchange with journalists that Foreign Minister Lavrov had. You don't give us orders, you just catch the moment. We'll see you after the meeting. Thank you. And before we end this edition of the news, a reminder of our headlines. The health expansion project supported by the Islamic Development Bank has earmarked seven health facilities for major refurbishments as plans to erect two other new health centers moved forward. The Intergovernmental Action Group Against Money Laundering in West Africa is intensifying its fight on a raft of of unhealthy financial practice with a two-day convergence in Banjo. Heavy inundations triggered by torrential rains in the U.S. state of Colorado has rendered thousands of people homeless, prompting President Obama to sign a declaration of emergency. And the authorities in Kenya take on heavily armed ivory poachers, resulting in the death of three people. Well, that brings us to the news. Thanks for the pleasure of your company. Stay tuned and enjoy Jatis programs. Yeah, 